Hey y'all, this is Laura and I am doing collaboration for Scrap Lift Sunday with Miranda Weber. And this Sunday we're going to be scrap lifting Missy Widden and that gorgeous layout that I had at the beginning of the video with her color blocked grid. That's the layout that I'm going to be trying to lift, trying being the operative word, and Miranda's gonna lift a different layout. So I will put her link in the description below. So let's get started. So we're starting out with some Liquitex modeling paste, putting it through an Echo Park stencil. Then I'm gonna use these two colors of Heidi Swap Color Shine and these two shimmers, and I'll tell you what those are in just a moment, and the Bohemian Dreams collection on this layout. So I have four quadrants of stars with modeling paste on the paper, just the center of the paper. It may be a little difficult to see at this point, but once I get the color on there, those shapes are really going to pop. Starting with this purple, which is Heidi Swap's Amethyst Color Shine. And all of these paints are, paints and sprays are shimmery. And while it doesn't show up terribly well on video, they sparkle like nobody's business in real life. They're beautiful. So I'm mixing them with water and I'm trying to create the gradient that Missy had with a darker patch of color nearer to the photo, spreading out to lighter color closer to the edges of the paper. The problem here is I haven't uh, thought about how big my photo is. Missy's photo is very small. It is probably around two by two or two and a half by two and a half maybe would be my guess because a lot of her squares show, whereas my photo, which is closer to four by four, covers up a great deal of this darker color in the center. So I hadn't really thought about that. That is something to keep in mind if you're trying to scrap lift someone is to think about the proportions of their layout. I don't normally do a two by two photo or two and a half even. Um, that's a little too small for me. So this will have to do. I'm bringing in now the Heidi Swap Color Shine in Butter, which is a crazy name for a spray, but it's yellow. I mean, <laughs> I suppose butter is as good a description as any. And uh, the colors do look a bit muted on camera here. I was filming during the day, so I have quite a lot of light coming into my room, which is fabulous for filming, but the colors are not exactly true. You'll see in the still photos of the end, these colors are actually quite vibrant and very beautiful. Now, the shimmers. The pink shimmers was called Pinko de Mayo, and the turquoise teal one is called Peacock's Plume. And Peacock's Plume is dark. It is a very, very vibrant color. And I did have to water that one down quite a lot to get closer to that lighter teal that I was looking for. Okay, so now I've brought out my T-square and I am going to do the stitching. Now, Missy Widden uses a sewing machine and I would if my sewing machine and I got along, uh, but we don't. There's a little too much tension between us and not enough tension on the machine uh, for me to be able to use it accurately. So I'm going to do some hand stitching instead and I'm just going to create my own holes, my own little lines here, little dividing lines, which are not terribly well defined because I did run the colors together a little bit, but that's okay because a lot of it's going to get covered up anyway. And I do realize that, so I wasn't too worried about it. So once I've made my holes, which let me tell you, <laughs> this was done on Vicki Booten's foundations paper, which is crazy thick paper and was really hard to punch holes in, by the way. So now that that is chain stitched, here is my photo of uh, monkey. No, it's a couple of pottery pieces that my friends and I had painted uh, for a girl's night a while back. And I decided to do a before and after shot of the two of the three pieces there. So I've popped that up onto a, some adhesive foam and I have matted it with one of the papers from the six by six paper pad. Now, I've decided to punch out just a couple of shapes from the paper pad because when I had pulled out some ephemera and some chipboard and some vellum pieces, I realized I didn't have a lot to pick from in this collection that were one color. So 
I decided, well, let me punch some shapes out of the papers to fill in the gaps. And that turns out to be a very, very beneficial technique because it's pretty much what saved this layout. So I'm going to start arranging things. I'm going to cut off these leaves and toss them over into the tealy blue pile because they match there. So why not? And just start piling all of these pieces on. Now, I get about halfway through this process when I realize that I've missed a step. Missy Wooden has a tendency to layer behind her photo uh, with a lot of different bits and pieces, with pocket life cards, with ephemera, with uh, ripped pieces of paper. Lots of textural items get layered behind her photo before she attaches it to the paper. And I didn't do that because I forgot. <laughs> For a lack of a better reason, I just forgot to do it. And I go ahead and I start kind of trying to get an idea of where things are going to go and just playing around with the different pieces. So I decided to bring in some thread, just hoping that that makes a difference. Missy's known for using that balled up thread technique. And I'll be honest, that's not something I've ever tried. I love it. It's cool. And I will definitely be trying that on more of my layouts, especially mixed media layouts that are a little bit messy. And here's the point where I thought, Let's try this layered nonsense, okay? Let's try to get some of these messy layers underneath of my photo. So what I did was I grabbed a couple of Project Life cards that were sitting on my desk and just ripped them up. I don't like ripped edges, not a fan, to be 100% honest. And it doesn't really bother me on this layout because it's a messy layout. I think with mixed media, you can get away with these messy torn edges and it's not as in your face as it would be on a clean, you know, <laughs> straightforward pattern paper background. I made it work. Proud of myself because torn edges, <sighs> something that I'm, I'm embracing slowly. Um, <laughs> so I did bring in the, the Project Life cards and just use them to create some layers and some depth and that helped me to flesh out that side. Now, I did find this was an issue with every single side because there was so much paint and I just couldn't fill the square. And I felt like I should fill the square. And when I went back and looked at Missy's layout, I realized she did not fill the entire square with color. She did a big splotch of color coming out from the photo and it kind of trails off a little bit into the rest of the square, but a great deal of the square is white and it is left white and its presence is only known because of the texture paste in the background. And I didn't realize that. So definitely a learning experience, but overall, I really like how this layout came out. It was uh, a very interesting learning experience. I felt like I would have done a much better job if I'd had Missy sitting next to me going, no, no, do this. <laughs> or, hey, how about this? Try that. That would have made it much easier, but I didn't have Missy Wooden here with me, unfortunately, so I had to wing it. But you know what? Winging it is something I'm actually pretty good at. So made it work. So we're doing the same thing here. I've grabbed one of the cut apart pages from the six by six paper pad and I've broken off the different colors and I'm just ripping off sections and tucking it under my photo, trying to kind of faux, <laughs> faux layer this thing because my photo is already attached to the paper. And I'm just gonna fit in as many of these little layers as I can and then come back in with the embellishments. And where there's empty spaces, I am punching out shapes. I have a small flower and a small heart punch, and I am using those to punch out the different colors where I have gaps. And that helped so much in making this layout work. In retrospect, I probably should have pulled out all of the embellishments and taken a look to see what I had to work with. What did I really have in those monochromatic colors? That would have been helpful. So little tip for you if you were to try this technique, 
definitely take stock of your inventory before you start, <laughs> before you choose your colors of paint anyway. So here we go. We're adding in some sequins all around the page. I thought this would be a nice detail. Uh, I do end up going in and adding some splattering off camera. And the reason I did it off camera is because I realized I'd forgotten to do it and my camera had died. So while it was charging, I went in and did some splattering on all four colors. And uh, then when I came, when it was dry and the camera was charged, I got back to it. This layout took me three hours. Three hours! Y'all, I never take that long on a layout. Unless I'm hand stitching the entire background, it never takes me more than an hour, hour and a half max. So this was quite the labor of love. Adding in all of these little bitty pieces and just trying to fit it together. It was just, <sighs> gave me a new appreciation for Missy's process, that is for sure. I have watched so many of her videos and I greatly enjoy them. And it just seems like she just, makes it work. She tucks it under there and it works and it goes. No problem. <laughs> but you know what? A lot of editing in those videos, I am sure, takes place. And so it's, it's definitely a fascinating process here. I think I enjoyed the detail work of adding in the sequins, adding in some tiny little puffy hearts and the splatters. I enjoyed that part, but this process of tucking in all of these pieces and hoping they're in the best possible space, ripping off the back of chipboard because it's too thick <laughs> to tuck underneath of my photo. I mean, all of that almost kind of busy work, I guess is what comes to mind. Uh, I did not really enjoy that. And having all of these little gaps pop up and trying to find a way to fill them in a way that looks interesting was really a tedious process. And uh, on that note, I'm not sure that I would try to take on quite the magnitude of this layout again. I will be incorporating some of the things I learned though for sure. I really like the messy thread look behind flowers. I think it looks really cool. I love the idea of using shimmers or a sparkly paint in the background. I thought that was a lot of fun. And I really like the color tones of this once I added some water to it. Uh, I didn't love it out of the bottle, out of the container. It was really in your face. But once you add some water to it, it stayed shimmery, which I was kind of surprised at, but also very happy to discover. So now that I have the majority of the layout finished, I'm gonna come in with my title. And this is left over from a pack of Amy Tangerine Thickers. And I wanted to change this fun to the colors that it's going to be overlapping. So the pink on one side, the yellow on the other, and I decided to do a bit of a blend in the middle of the two colors. And I will say one thing about this, I really like how this little title came out, but the shimmers took forever to dry on this thing. And the Heidi Swap, mist did not. It dried very quickly. But on the F part, it just, oh, it took forever to dry. The shimmers just did not want to adhere to that foam. So now it's done. Check out all of these details. But I hope you enjoyed this process. I hope you will check out the rest of our scrap timber videos. Thanks for joining me, guys. Until next time. Bye.